Welcome to MMA FanCast and a big Merry Christmas to everybody as we hit seven days from Christmas. What a great time uh, to celebrate. Welcome back to everybody who's already a subscriber to the MMA FanCast channel. If you're not, please subscribe. It's a great way for you to watch more and more uh, interviews like the one we got coming up now. The victorious, impressive, just incredible knockout for 247 Fighting Champs Brawl in the Berg 19, Evan Darussi! Hey, good evening. I'm glad to be back on the show again. Glad to have you back on the show. It's been incredible having you on the show before and after all of your fights so far in your amateur career. Hope to follow you all the way up to when you have gold wrapped around your waist and beyond. So great having you on the show. There were only two finishes um, at 247, it was a great card. That doesn't take away from all the decisions. It, all, a lot of those decisions were incredible. Couple split, couple fight of the fight of the year contenders. But your fight is a knockout of the year contender. Let's jump into it before I ask specifics because my brain's been replaying the 30 seconds you were in there. Let's get your first impression. What do you want to share about such an incredible performance that you just had? So. I really want to bring attention to uh, how much more patient I looked in that cage. Uh, that was what I remember I was talking to you about earlier, that uh, pre-fight interview. I was talking about working with Yuri Villafort and that active reactive fighting. That's yeah. exactly what we worked on. We worked on measuring, feigning, getting reactions, leading them to the right or left to set up that right hand or that left hook and just keeping them in front of you and picking them apart. And I did just that and it set up that amazing knockout and it's funny because like, you know, Danilo always was preaching to me and saying like, you got to build up the knockout. You got to build up the knockout. You got to start, you know, with one, two strike combos, then work up to three, four strike combos. Then you get it to the five, six strike combos. And then that puts them out. You got to keep building on what you're doing. And, and I did, and it, it turned out great. So the early Christmas present for me. <laughs> early Christmas present, not only for you, but for me and everybody else in a, very full, wonderful closeout, uh, closeout crowd for 2023 for 247. Just a lot of excitement. Uh, and you you definitely took the lid off of it with such an incredible performance. You mentioned the left hook and the right straight or the right cross. That's exactly what put him away. Talk a little bit about your pinpoint accuracy, because for people that don't know, watch the fight. Uh, but for it's all 30 seconds of it. For people that don't know, it's very hard. To, to hit an opponent in the head once, much less twice, while he's weaving around and obviously stumbling. And that's why you'll see, even at the highest level, when somebody's on ice skates like your opponent was, or chicken legs, however they, ever they say it, a lot of times it's very hard to hit that second punch because they, they're being unpredictable. Not that that's their plan, but, you know, that, that's what's happening. So what was it like hitting him with the, what looked like a check left? He went wobbly, and then you finished him really on, on the feet. He went limp on the way down what was that like and how well can you see in there to set up that second strike yeah i was i was it felt like sparring honestly like that that fight felt like sparring like i was as calm as i was in sparring and i saw everything like i would see in sparring uh and then my pin that pinpoint accuracy you're talking about that's coming that comes from mikey coach mm -hmm. mikey i talk about him a lot i mean he's literally like the people calling him the wizard. There's people calling him the wizard. Like he, he really is. He's, he the helps wizard. him out so much. And like everybody that's starting to work with him now at our gym doing privates and stuff, they're getting like levels, levels better. Like it, it's, it's real, real awesome to see. And yeah, like I said, I just, like I would just catch him with a couple shots. And then, like you said, it's hard when they're on those ice skates. And uh, I saw him when I hit him, I actually hit him with a, I came in with a, a jab hook, caught him with a right and then clinched up for a second, like dirty boxing almost. And then I did a step back and then another right hand right on the temple. And that's what wobbled him. And he, his head came down first and I was going to follow up with a hook, but I would, I didn't want to, I wouldn't, I didn't want to follow through with that cause I would have caught him on the top of the head and probably broke my hand. Mm -hmm. So I pulled back on the hook and then I just tapped him with a jab right on the chin. I barely even caught him on the chin with that jab. And that that's the one that completely put him out. Wow. So and then I followed up with nice shots to the body and then Chip came in and pushed me off. So, yeah, yeah, it was a, it was really great. The fact that you could see all that in there, um, 
I, I had the honor of uh, in late summer, maybe early September range, I got to sit in and watch both Uncle Jeff and Coach, uh, yeah, Uncle Jeff and Coach Mikey uh, take you particularly. I mean, you were there, Ken Burrs were there, a bunch of other people, but the two that I knew from 247 were you guys. I could see that, you know, we talked at that at that night of just how talented, and of course, everyone should already know how talented Danilo is, the owner of, of Indio and uh, the high level. But one of the things about having a great gym is not it all just following on the one coach. It's surrounding with great coaches. And uh, I was impressed with the striking because I know the, those are the striking coaches with the striking that that uh, Coach Mikey was doing. You, you really are a great example of somebody who's willing to put the work, but also has the great coaching. And that together is really what matters. Uh, it sounds like you did kind of everything you wanted to do coming into the fight. Clearly, a, a big part was, like you said, kind of getting that range, letting it breathe. It's hard to say that you let a 30-second fight breathe, but you did, right? You found your spots. You, you you reacted. Now, let's talk about the first, what was it, six seconds, where he came out kind of like a squirrel. I don't know how else to say it. He was like real unique moving, real jittery moving. Did you expect that? I know he'd only had one fight. He was 1-0. Like, what, what, what was your brain doing with that kind of weird movement early? No, I mean, I, as soon as I came out, I knew that was a mismatch as soon as he started moving like that because, I mean, you could tell that's just – that's somebody that hasn't been training a lot. That's people that just start training. That's the way they move. And uh, that was a little unfortunate, but that's not on my – that's all on no. me. That's on their coaches. I mean, their coaches had my fight footage and everything. They knew what I was about, and that's what happens when you match me up with somebody that's that much less experienced than me. I mean, they're going to get put out, and they're going to get hurt. So sure. you know, either way, I mean, it's a fight, so I'm going to, it's my job. So I just got to finish people and get the win any way I can. So. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and, and that's the exciting part too. You, you are now at the level with three and O particularly coming off what is likely it'll be a knockout of the year candidate. And this is a great way to start plugging. And as we wrap up 2023, two, four, seven uh, fighting championships will have, their second annual award show. I'm super excited. Last year, there was thousands of votes. This year, I'm sure there'll be even more. I'm sure you'll be one of the uh, one of the nominees for that uh, knockout of the year. Um, it was it was really, really impressive. And obviously, it's your job to put on the best show. And it's your opponent's job to put on the best show he can. So that's that's the job of fighters. And yeah, that's two years in a row, too, that I got I've, I've been on a nomination for something. So um, for last year, I was nominated for fight of the year. This year, I should be on there for knockout of the year. So that right there, I, I just wanted to highlight that. I think that's a great accomplishment in itself. Even if I don't win any awards or anything, it's nice just to be nominated and continually putting on good shows for the crowd in 247 and represent yeah. the gym and everything the best way I can. So Yeah, yeah, it's a great attitude overall to have. I think all the nominees – feel it. I think it's super special that 247 does it. And then there's also amateur fight of the year, you know, all the gym of the year, the coach of the year, there's so many good things. And, you know, voting is always kind of, you know, it, it, it is up to the public, but I think you're right. Just to be in the running, just to be nominated um, shows your consistency and that you're raising your, your level year to year. Um, Anyhow, I started thinking about about some of the categories because it, it is exciting. But back to you, your three and oh, you had an incredible performance. We had talked coming into this fight about this would be your last fight at novice rule sets. Um, and you're aware of that, you train for that, but obviously you're ready for advanced amateur. Let's talk about that. First off, the rounds. Three three minute rounds mean that you will be adding an entire extra round to your time, you know, compared to novice i've seen your cardio conditioning we've talked about on here about the fact that at india dojo you guys do an hour or some nights you guys do an hour of cardio before you do the actual drilling and striking which there's cardio components in there how confident are you that a nine minute fight is is right in your wheelhouse right off the bat if you need to get in there and fight a hard nine minute fight in your first uh advanced amateur how confident are you that that'll go well I'm very confident. Like I said, I mean, I, I bust my butt in there. I, I don't turn, I don't skip any corners or anything. And uh, we, we always do five, six minute rounds anyways, when we train, it's never two minute rounds. We don't train, you know, 
that's silly i think to be only training two minute rounds when even if it's a two minute round fight you know you should be tripling what you're doing just in case you know and uh yeah like I, i'm glad actually that the, the flights are going to be a little longer because uh, i'll be able to sh get more experience that way and what how else are you going to get more experience than fighting longer so yeah you know, i'm not trying to just go in there and i mean yeah it's nice to go in there and get finishes real quick but like I think amateur is more about gaining as much experience as you can before you go pro. So I'm definitely going to take advantage of those longer rounds and I'm going to play around, not play around a little more, but I think you're going to see a lot more, a lot more things than that. Cause I, I really haven't showed that much. I mean, have you seen, you haven't seen any, my, even any grappling yet, really. Yeah. I just been defense. I've been on my D I've been on grappling defense my last two fights because I haven't had to show it. Why would I show something I don't have to show? Right. You know? Yeah, and part of the longer rounds, obviously, they're short compared to five-minute rounds, which is pro, right? So you got to still be training for the next level, which I'm sure you guys already are. Um, but also, it allows you to develop. You know, an extra minute allows you to develop things. If you're on the feet, it allows you to develop more. If you're on the ground, it allows you to develop more. Uh, rule set-wise, the three big changes are three, three minutes, no shin pads, which makes a big visual difference to the audience. It also makes things a little bit easier on the ground with leg entanglements and, and submissions and things like that. Triangles are a whole lot easier. Other, other things, even arm bars where you get your legs involved, uh, you know, not having shin pads are good. And then obviously close fist striking on the ground, not elbowing on the ground, but ground and pound. Uh, Can't you head kick too? You cannot head kick. I can tell you really? right now, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, you cannot head kick. Oh, the head is tough. still, I can tell you, just so that you're clear, hey, the head tough. is the same rules as novice. The, no, the novice rules, as far as no elbows to the head, no knees to the head, and no kicks to the head, do not change in Pennsylvania until you're pro. Dang. Just so you know. Yeah. Was that always like that? Yes. I'm uh, going okay. back. For some, for some reason, I thought like, last year, I thought advanced you're allowed to head kick. Because I remember seeing in the, I remember the fight card, the girl got, in trouble for head kicking too and i'm like they were advanced you know and i was thinking I'm like well maybe it's just females and i'm like no that can't be right so I, yeah, yeah i've been i i was coaching mma fighters in pennsylvania 10 years ago in 2013 and that was the those were the rules back then so they could still change but it's been at least a decade of those rules so yeah it's unfortunate because obviously part of coach mikey's skill set is setting up head kicks you know i, I know you've got a whole arsenal that you can't see um, I got some, I got some nice flashy moves too. I wanted to break out that Danilo been uh, training, ooh. but we'll save those. I guess that's all right. I guess you're gonna have to, but yeah, that's the thing. It's it's really strike wise. The only strike that's now legal is the fists on the ground up to the head. Uh, other strikes don't don't change. The elbows don't change. The knees don't change, and the kicks of the heads don't change. So, uh, sorry to burst your bubble a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, and and the girl fight that you were talking about with the the strike to the head, the kick to the head. Uh, fortunately, it was she aimed at the shoulder, hit the shoulder, bounced mm -hmm. up into the arm. Uh, Chip saw it as an illegal strike, uh, which is his his claim to make. But it was not thrown mm -hmm. intentionally to be a to be a head kick. Now the one exception, which is super gray area, which usually the refs will say uh, in the fighter meeting. I know you pay attention, fighters. Coaches, please pay attention to the fighters meeting because there's a lot of arguments that sometimes happen when people don't always listen to the fighters meeting with the ref. But sometimes if a, if a fighter intentionally ducks down and into a head kick, in other words, you're kicking shoulder or ribs and a fighter makes an erratic move or even a move to try to draw the illegal strike, most of the time, and you, of course, can ask the, the ref beforehand, most of the time if the ref sees it as – you threw it to be legal and he moved into it. Usually yeah. that's still allowed, but that is such a gray area. Yeah. It's an interpretation type thing. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so for you, um, do you have a call out at, at your weight category that's within Q47 or are you just looking to make a splash with the advanced amateur rules next time out? Well, I think the only thing that makes sense right now is getting matched up with Dan Walters. I mean, I was sitting back thinking and, you know, I talked to Hunter a while back and like I was telling him what I planned on doing at 247. And I said, I'd like to have a title shot maybe at like my fifth fight, sixth fight, sure. you know, and I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, who the heck is still 
dominating right now at 70 around Pittsburgh, and the only other person I can think of is Dan Walters. So I'm guessing that's probably going to – he's on a two-fight win streak too, so that I would definitely love to fight him. I mean, that's going to be a hell of a show, and I think that's a really good – um really good fight to put on for the fans too because my last two fights like they were kind of they were kind of like uh I was more experienced you know so this one is least is going to be should be a highly competitive fight yeah the great call out all respect to Dan Waters that's what's exciting about amateur when you're starting to put together multiple fights like he's on a two fight win streak um it it's a compliment to match up talented guys against each other we saw that last night that that's a good thing um, so, yeah, certainly makes sense to me. I know Jim Mooney is already matching, and it would be a great thing if you fight Dan. That would be awesome. They also mentioned on the wrap-up uh, for 247, whether it's on YouTube or, or, or 247 Live or Facebook, people should check it out. But Jim Mooney mentioned that for amateur for amateur uh, title fights, they really want – Kind of like exactly what you're saying. They, they want an amateur fighter to at least have one or more fights at advanced amateur prior to getting a title fight. You're 3-0. and You're going to be fighting advanced amateurs. So thinking that you want a title fight at around fight five or six, uh, that, that makes perfect sense. And that's right around the line of what they want to do. Anyhow, I think a Dan Walters fight or something at that caliber would certainly make, uh, make a lot of sense. Uh, we also – yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, too, like after my fight, I did the belt thing, you know, and I said in this camera, I said that I'm coming for that belt. I didn't say I want a title shot. I knew I got to do more. I don't want to be given anything. I want to I want to fight for it and I want to prove that I deserve that. So I'm glad that they're actually doing that, that they're not just giving out uh, title shots to just anybody because it holds more weight, you know, and, and it helps me in my future. Like I can be like look back and like if 247 is this respected organization you know they could be like hey i held a belt here at 247 you know maybe two and then uh that that'll that's good on the resume so sure. yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely that is a big that is a big deal we've seen uh the, the quality of level of champions in 247 that that's the idea right the idea is uh, a previous 170 pound no sorry 185 pound champ is now a pro who i think is uh, four and one or four and two at the pro level. Dixon was his last name at 185. I think he fought pro at 170 or 185, but still that's the caliber, right? If you're a amateur belt holder, you should be significant at pro, right? You should be ready to go pro um, and, and, and those type things. Super exciting. I think the fact that you are training to win the belt is the plan, right? You, you've been very serious. I called your first amateur fight. I remember saying I'd had you on this show before. And I remember saying like, that's how it should look, right? You came into an O and O and you look like a guy who a lot of guys look at when they have three or four fights. And that's a compliment, right? To your training, to your coaches, that you're coming in brand new, looking like you're experienced. And now that you are experienced, you're looking even more experienced. You're looking ready for that next level. So that that that's the exciting part um in the in the journey. Did anything fight, else I was gonna say, I mean, the fight game is unforgiving. Like yeah, you, like if you <laughs> People don't understand, like, at least for me, my mind works as, like, this is a fight. Like, I'm going to be fighting in front of my family, my friends. I'm representing my gym, my freaking community, everybody that I know, you know, that's backing me up. I represent all them. I'm not taking this lightly. Like, I'm not going to go in there and, be, and ter get turned into a highlight because I didn't train and I took this lightly. Like, that's what I'm saying. I trained for, I trained, I think it was, like, nine or ten months straight like six days a week, you know, a couple times a day, like before I took my first fight. And I, and now my inexperience, I was like, oh, I want to get in there three months in. But yeah. my coaches were like, no, we're doing this right. Yeah. And we did. And, and I'm so glad I listened to him because now I'm better off. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is a reason to listen to coaches. And, and, and it's good that you're chomping at the bit. It's good that you wanted to fight after three months, but it's also good that they held you back, right? That development is good. It's mm -hmm. awesome. I mean, Indio Dojo, for those in the area, it, it's incredible. Um, there's a lot of humility. Like, I, I think that really goes a long way. You, you've got to want to keep learning and keep pushing yourself like you just did when you were saying three three months in. I've known fighters that if they think they're ready three months after training and their coaches won't let them, they'll jump to another gym. That's not advisable. What you did, respectful, uh, appreciating the advice you were getting. 
that that goes a long way. I'm, I'm super excited for you and for everybody. I'd love to see Ken Burrs back in, you know, and anybody else out of that gym, obviously. So really great things all together. Incredible. Uh, like you said, it would be great if next time out there you had a longer fight, but it's also great if you keep finishing fights too. So wh however it, however it plays out is incredible. Um, I'm really honored to have you on. I know that you have a, a very meaningful support network, friends, family, and sponsors. Let's get to that because the sponsors and the friends and the support, they not only got you there, they're now also a part of the celebration of such a great fight from Saturday. Oh yeah, it was awesome. I, I tried, I, I hit up, uh, so yeah, my sponsors, Vesta 88 Riverhouse, uh, Pacey's, and then uh, GRM Contracting. But I, I hit up Vesta 88 Riverhouse and Pacey's was like, hey, I got a crew of people wanting to come. We were at the fight still, we were like trying to part, you know, celebrate. And, but they ended up having to close early, which is, you know, they usually close early because they're more restaurant oriented wow. anyways. So makes sense. But uh yeah, I was trying to trying to, you know, support them and get them some money, but it's all right. And then uh I stopped down. I, I think I might have another sponsor lined up. I'm not gonna say it yet because I don't know for sure, but it's another local uh business around my area. So I'm glad that the local businesses and stuff and people locally are starting to get behind me and support me because like I said, I, I take a lot of pride in where I come from and I'm glad that to help out and give back to the community and maybe get some eyeballs on the community and bring some more uh, businesses down here so we can make some more money, you know, and, and really get our community uh, booming again. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great perspective to have. They're helping you. You're also helping them. That's the thing. Take nothing for granted. Be appreciative like you are. And the fact that there's local businesses like you went through uh, before the fight and now that support you and encourage you, it should also help them. You know, people should be, I always, we always say this, Drew Shannon always says it, uh, when he's when he's doing some of the you know some of the sponsors and stuff too for two four seven supporting the sponsors that support local MMA regional MMA is important because it keeps everything moving right so that's awesome stuff you're a great representative for whoever wants to sponsor you I think that's a big deal too sponsors want fighters that are going to conduct themselves like you do professionally like you're a great fighter you've got great skills to be able to communicate you you also really are a great brand brand ambassador right and so that's awesome you're the full package it's always great having you on the show uh merry christmas obviously to you and everybody you gave everybody an early christmas gift that was there to see you and and uh and just can go into 2024 really excited so it's always awesome to have you on the show hey thank you so much for having me again and i can't wait to be on again i can't wait to have you back on again this is luke basin from mma fancast with heaven Darusi, how to roll my R one more time. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. You got it, brother.